This most recent episode brought us back to the Lust Ring in Hell of a Boss, and with what we saw, it gives the impression that the Lust Ring is perhaps one of the nicest places to live in Hell. Now, this is Hell, as I just said, so we generally think of it as a place of torture, but at this point in Hell of a Boss specifically, things have kind of changed. In Hasbin Hotel's development, what we now think of as the Pride Ring seems to have been the singular location for Hell, with the other six rings being made for Hell of a Boss to give it new territory to explore. This would leave the story of the Overlords and their enslavement of the Sinners in the Pride Ring as something saved for Hasbin Hotel. Now, to replace those overlords as big side characters to explore in Hell of a Boss, we got the Seven Princes and the secondary nobility of the Ars Goetia, with some of these figures having similar symbolism to the overlords. One example is the Prince of the Envy Ring, Leviathan. We know very little of this ring, but it seems to be a place that the other species of Hell and the other six rings seem to very much envy. With the deep sea demon we saw in episode 4 of season 2, giving the impression it's a very elitist suburban lifestyle living there. On Blitz's phone, we also see that Envy has their hands in social media, with an app called NV that looks a lot like TikTok. This is an industry reliant on the overlord sinner known as Vox, because he's the one that brought in screen technology to Hell, with his fellow overlord Velvet being the one who brought Hell into the age of social media. Similarly, Osmodius is the prince of the Lust Ring, and pushes a lustful lifestyle onto his people and Hell as a whole, similar to the third member of Vox's overlord team, Valentino. However, these two can ultimately explore very different types of lust, with Osmodius being rooted in more old-school ideas of lust, and Valentino being primarily about adult films. Valentino is one of the primary antagonists of Hasbin Hotel, using one of the lead characters, Angel, as the star of his adult films. However, as Vivzy Pop develops her story for Hell of a Boss, some of the royals would become less evil than fans originally imagined. Stolas and Osmodius are both royal demons, but at the end of the day, the story we are focusing on is their romances with lower class demons. Stolas is presented as more endearing than Blitz, who is our proxy for a commoner in Hell, but for that to work, we have to like Stolas and Osmodius as people overall. With that in mind, there are limits to how evil these characters can be. It's fine for them to be evil in the vague sense if the goals are beyond their depth. Osmodius is a high-ranking demon in Hell with his two elite titles in the Seven Princes and the Ars Goetia, but the plans to conquer Earth seem far beyond him, and in fact, his primary interest is just making better and better erotic toys and adult clubs for other demons to enjoy. Osmodius is presented as a playboy noble who doesn't necessarily want to stop the evil plans of the other royals, but even if he wanted to, he couldn't. Instead, we judge him based more on how he treats the people around him, which is Fizzerali, his ring, and other royals. Osmodius, of course, treats Fizzerali like he is the greatest thing to ever happen. He made Fizzerali a partner in life as well as a business partner and helps to manage Fizzerali's own career as part of the brand for Mammon, the prince of the greed ring. He treats Fizzarelli delicately, and overall, he seems to treat other people in this ring very similarly. While he isn't afraid to get angry at someone to make sure they stay in line, he is even rather courteous with imps like Moxie and Millie, simply yelling at them to leave his club after actually physically assaulting Fizzarelli. With that in mind, I think Osmodius generally wants what is best for his population, which is of course largely made up of succubus and incubus. These demons are known from real life myth to prey sexually on humans. In the show, they have bat-like qualities such as with their wings, and give the impression that they evolved as sort of sexual vampires. I believe that deep in the past of Hell, they were likely wild animals that were able to use their powers to lure in other species as prey, with them having hypnotizing powers of a sexual nature. Over time, and perhaps with the help of Osmodius guiding their evolution, they would become the more humanoid sexy seducers we see in the show. Now, sexuality is always a complex topic, but for this discussion, I think it's important to recognize that this is extremely fantasy, and while there may be some internal politics to the issues of how sex work as an industry affects the entire population of the Lust Ring, the show is presenting the succubus and incubus as having a natural interest in this lifestyle. With the imps of the Wrath Ring, there is a natural interest in violence and death, and this is not seen as offensive. But since sexuality is such a touchy subject, I want to make sure everyone understands that this is not a discussion about reality, but about a fantasy land where sexy demons have turned their entire civilization into a nightclub district.
It allows for absurdity where Osmodius can have large, elaborate factories where he spends all of his time weighing in on the development of erotic toys, instead of doing anything a royal with two titles should actually be doing with his time. So the world we're exploring here in Hell of a Boss is not meant to be commentary on a real society, nor is it my commentary on society. It's just a silly fantasy land that exists largely to make Osmodius seem silly, so that people can appreciate his silly relationship with his silly gay clown. With that in mind, this is what life seems to be like for the common folk in the Lust Ring. The Lust Ring is the fifth ring down with a dark blue sky, giving the impression that it is always late at night there. Additionally, it is always raining in the Lust Ring, which I have theorized to actually be the leaking ocean of the Greed Ring above it. This atmosphere makes the whole ring feel like the inside of a dark cave, explaining why the bat-like succubus evolved there. With their wings, they likely could fly to other rings during their night to prey on the demons there, returning to the Lust Ring like one giant cave they call home during the day. In the present, this atmosphere makes it the perfect place for others to come visit for nightlife. With it constantly feeling like night, visitors will always want to go explore, and there will likely be 24-hour clubs and events. With their wings, and already being adapted to the weather, Succubus could travel around the ring with ease, enjoying the dark atmosphere along the way. When not in a party district, the dark sky likely leads to a very relaxing downtime, with people easily being able to transition out of party mode once back at their residence or motel and the quiet, dark night atmosphere surrounds them. During the proper day hours that the other rings experience, Osmodius would conduct his general business, and the various operations such as his factories would hold their work hours. While Succubus and Incubus generally seem to enjoy sexuality, those that don't seem to have ample opportunity for happy employment at one of the factories. Outside of this, there would of course also be the regular infrastructure that exists outside of the lust industries, typically shops and such that would still require workers for those who had no interest in the sex industry at all. So at the end of the day, while the lust ring is very lust themed, Osmodius seems to have built a system that relies largely on consent. In the most recent episode, he even tells Stolas that he doesn't do love potions because he wants all things to come naturally, whether carnal or romantic. Now what Osmodius wants at the end of the day is a place to just be as playboy as he can be, and to do that, he needs to keep his people happier than the other royals and elites are keeping their own people. Many of the other royals seem to rely heavily on guards and not mingling with the common folk as much. The exception to this appears to be Beelzebub, though she seems to need the energy of people in general in order to produce her Beelzejuice's honey, so it's not like Osmodius who seems to actually just be more personable. While Beelzebub will bend over backwards to try and help someone at her party in particular, she throws the orphans of her ring into terrible pounds, such as the one Luna was adopted from. Asmodeus, on the other hand, seems to have built a system where the succubus can do what comes naturally to them, while profiting enough to live better than the average demon in other rings. There seems to be exceptions to this, as the deep sea demons of envy appear to be suburbanites, and the lower classes of sloth seem to be well off all in all, but they of course have their own issues, like the crippling addiction their people have due to the pharmaceutical industry that they rely on. At the end of the day, every ring has its trade-offs, and I imagine none of them will ever truly be a paradise, but less seems to be a comfier place to live in all in all, with less of a sharp class division that we see in the other rings. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.